about. It's 10 August, it's 2016, and I've made this display. Uh, unfortunately, there's a plexiglass, and it, it might reflect my image, or so I'll move this camera around. Uh, so hopefully you can see what I'm trying to point at. Uh, this is representing the raised beds that we do our planting in. If you look, I've got a strawberry plant right here with a couple strawberries, uh, and it's doing really well. It's thriving in this living, healthy soil. The way we set it up is once we let the organic materials of the barley, the coffee grounds, and the wood chips decompose, it creates this rich, organic, black material that we call humus. It's thriving with aerobic bacteria. And if I move this around, you're going to see in the middle, it's got a core here. In our, it, it's representing the rotten straw, the rotting um, leaves, uh, the maple leaves. We soak them in water for six months before we put them in our, our beds and they maintain the moisture level in the flower beds or in the raised beds. And this happens through capillary action when it dry, the soil dries out up here. It, it soaks the water uh, out to the outer edges and it keeps uh, the beds very moist uh, throughout most of the year and it reduces our, our need to water the, the flower beds. Not only that, but it, the, this woody area here is a, uh, a source of fungus, uh, food for the fungus, and the roots want to go deep to get down to that, that fungus because 90% of the plants have this symbiotic relationship with the fungus, the mycelium, or the mycorrhizal uh, which is another word for fungus root. It's basically the white little strands that come out of the bottom of a mushroom and they cover the whole forest floor. It's how the trees communicate with each other. It's how they uh, pass nutrients around. Uh, they extend the root system's ability to uh, capture nutrients a hundred to a thousand times farther than the root reach. Uh, and when we turn the soil over, we kill that uh, myocillium, we kill that mycorrhizal uh, life that exists. The bacteria still remains, but the fungal life gets decimated and destroyed. And, and, and the way it works is the roots give the, it, uh, the fungi attaches to the roots. Some of it does, and some of it uh, just stays further out. And, gives off enzymes and, and the enzymes dissolve the uh, minerals that the plants can't normally take like iron or phosphorus or potassium and, and they're often stationary in the soil so if the plants can't reach them uh, they're not going to have access to it but with the ac access of mycelium with that symbiotic relationship the roots give the uh, fungus uh, car uh, carbon dioxide, carbon, uh, and then the fungus uh, dissolves those, uh, gives off an enzyme and dissolves those uh, minerals that allows the plants to take them up and, and grow and thrive. So we want to continue that relationship in our raised beds because the plants thrive and grow in it. Uh, and so we fill up our raised beds with 80% of the compost soil that we create through those three ingredients and then we feed it to worms and after three or four months the worms turn it into castings and then the other 20 percent we put on top of the organic uh, soil and then on top of the worm castings we put wood chips and this allows the mycelium uh, to grow and thrive uh, it, it protects the bacteria in the soil and uh, it inhibits root growth, I mean uh, weeds from growing, and it's uh, a perfect system for uh, growing healthy vegetables that uh, eventually we consume. Uh, so we don't wanna have our vegetables in contaminated soil, so we grow our own soil and we uh, just enjoy the, the fruits of our labor, as you can see by these strawberries. 
that are just loving this habitat. So this is Kevin signing off, wishing you well. Take care. Till next video. Bye.